Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack. And the business of being black today is America. Do we still live in a racist country? Hmm. Well, uh, Keith made a few uh, suggestions here when he said, listen, we're it's America is still racist. We've got voter suppress, uh, suppression laws. And Derek said, what voter suppression laws? I voted. I'm black. Nobody suppressed me. Keith, I'm sure you voted. Dr. Ma, I'm sure you voted. Pastor, I'm sure you voted. We're all black. Where's the suppression here? Derek, is that what you wanted to suggest? How is that racist? We all voted. If, if the law says that anybody and everybody must prove that they are themselves in order to vote, then how is that discriminatory against blacks? That's like saying that we don't have the ability to produce an ID, but white people do. I'm not buying that. And frankly, I think it's insultful for the system to tell us that we can't produce IDs, but it isn't discriminatory to have whites produce IDs. No, they just know exactly, you know, who is likely to be able to produce one uh -huh. based on levels of poverty, based on the way we live. So the mere fact that we are required to, to produce an ID has everything to do with race and socioeconomics. Um, and, and, and so they know that, listen, a lot of the Jim Crow laws were race neutral. Come on. Yes. Poll taxes, grandfather clauses said nothing about race, just like the voter ID laws say nothing about race, but they know who the laws will impact. They know. Okay. That so blacks can't because produce because they, IDs. Whites can. Got it. I think that's an unfair argument because, um, many individuals, you talk about the low income area, uh, you need an ID to apply for low income benefits. And so to suggest that individuals don't have an ID or it's hard for them to get an ID, how are they able to acquire state or government benefits without an ID? As a matter of fact, I recently saw an interview out in Atlanta, Georgia, where it's kind of becoming the center of uh, voter suppression. Out in Georgia, they walked around and, and asked many individuals, including some homeless people, about actually having access to an ID. And many of them, if not all of them, said that they had an ID. So I think that that argument is becoming more just a a media talking point than the actual truth. No one is being denied access to an ID. And if so, if the amount of money that's being spent, the government can easily develop a program to make sure and assist that everyone do have an ID. All, Pastor Hawkins, I want to stay with you on this for a minute because you suggested that America's no longer racist um, because you just helped the first African-American mayor uh, come into office. Well, my question is, it's 2022. Why should we have a first African-American anything? We should be on at least, you know, I mean, from 1965 to 22, I'd say we should have at least that many amounts of people who are black that have attained some semblance of success and not still be happy to claim being the first of anything anymore. Absolutely. You're right. And so let's go back to what uh, Dr. Mayotte said in uh, 1870, which she said 99% of Blacks you know, work for whites. And in 2020, 98% Blacks work for whites. It's, it's not by choice. I mean, it's, it's not by force. And individuals you know, are choosing not to become entrepreneurs. Individuals are choosing to work. And there's nothing stopping. We have more resources and knowledge and information. Um, yeah, I'm big on not being the first. I talk about, you know, it's not about the first, it's about the second and the third. The, I, the reality of it is most individuals aren't getting involved. Yeah, I look here in California, there are 22 million registered voters in the state of California. 22 million, only 704,000 are black. Only, out of 22 million registered voters in the state of California, only 704,000 are black. So I'll tell you something, one, we really don't get involved, you know, whereas in 1965, and that's why I said it's time for us to really cross over Selma, in 1965, we fought for the very rights and now we're taking for granted or we're not even getting ourselves involved in. And, and that's the reality of it. It's not about me being the first I wish I wouldn't have been the first, but there were many people who lived in this community that just didn't see the need to run or even thought about running or even thought if it was possible. So, um, But just the mere suggestion that black people don't even think it's possible suggests that racism still exists because there's a mindset. That's the problem with racism. It creates a mentality um, that that exists long after the actual application of it in white people and black people. Uh, Dr. Ma, would you agree? I would agree 100 percent with you that that white people participate in, in uh, racism, some unconscious and some of them consciously participate. They actually benefit from from racism. If you if you study the policies, let's go back to President uh, uh, Roosevelt, okay, Franklin D. Roosevelt and his New Deal policies. 
uh, there were policies that were created. And just as Dr. Mays said earlier, that excluded black people. It did, they didn't say we're specifically ex excluding black people, but what they did was they shaped the policy such that only white people could benefit from the policies. And what that did was create black ghettos and white suburbs and it placed white people at the top of the racial hierarchy and black people at the bottom of the uh, racial hierarchy, which is racism. It's a structural relationship. So I don't understand how anyone on this panel can say that racism doesn't exist when we still exist in an environment that has a racial hierarchy with one group of people at the top and another group of people at the bottom. So to sit here and say there's no racism and we still are dealing with that hierarchy, the hierarchy is, is madness. And I want to say this, Tammy, before I, before I digress, I want to say this. Earlier today when you corrected your title, you didn't need to correct your title. Is America racist? Well, to be American, right, someone of America is to be white, which was a human category that was uh, created in the 1600s, right after the, the Nathaniel um, Bacon Rebellion, okay? And along with whiteness came laws, a package of laws that gave psychological and material value to whiteness, which created a racial hierarchy. America is built on racism and black people suffer from it while white people benefit from it.